How do you like the game? Rare? We travel to Swedish Lapland with Neil Roundtree to investigate how the capercaillie, a bird close to extinction in its native Scotland, can be hunted for lunch. I was shaking. Yeah, I think <laughs> you. I can, I, yeah, you could. Uh, yeah, you could both see that. Yeah, but you know, the day I stop getting excited about hunting, I'll stop hunting. Are the antis out of control in Africa? A special report from a South African filmmaker looks at conservation in Namibia and where it's heading. Animal rights organisations go to extraordinary lengths to prevent conservation facts. Looking for Parazzi pizzazz for a fraction of the price, Dan Bibb from Gunshop Shooting Sports UK has the answer. David has the news on the news stump. We have Hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. the tree. I stared there for, felt like 10 minutes, couldn't see a thing. A visit to Swedish Lapland feels like a step back in time. You know your neighbour. The roads are empty and the semi-domesticated livestock thinks it owns the place. With us inside the Arctic Circle is Neil Roundtree, deer manager and crofter. He is here to find out how the locals hunt, why there's such a high approval rating for hunting here, 88%, and what the UK and in particular Scotland can learn from the wildlife that thrives here and yet struggles back at home. Let's start with the king of the canopy, the capercaillie. To us at home, we consider them critical and then a lot of the conservation charities are making a huge fuss about capercaillie. They've spent millions of pounds of taxpayers' money. But are we shutting the stable door after the horse bolted? First of all, Neil needs to check his blazer. It's a drilling, a blazer D99, a hybrid combining rifle and shotgun. It's not a thing you see a lot of in Scotland, but uh, this is the Blazer D99. It's got an old 7x57 calibre. When I say old, it's a calibre that was very common in the Highlands years ago. And in the landscape here, when you've got a lot of woodland cover, it's a good, heavy, reliable slow round. When branches and twigs and that get through the way, it's a bit more forgiving than some of the high speed rounds. Okay. Stunning weather. It's not often we get days like this to try rifles, so we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll give it a go, see how we go. Take a rear defenders because there's uh, no moderator on this, as you can see. And what hearing I've got left, I'll try and hang on to. I like the safety mechanism on it, so the weapon's not going to open for you until such times as you take the safe, put the safety on. Okay. To be honest, very sweet to fire. Oh, I don't think there's any issues there, David, do you? I'm of the opinion that for 100 yards, it's absolutely spot on. But when the weapon's closed... With us is Mads, a Danish fishing guide, now looking to use both rod and rifle. But it gives you the option to hunt all sorts of game with just one weapon. So that's the beauty of them. With the rounds touching and Mads on the money, Neil's happy and it's back to the Jokfels, where we will be based for the majority of our stay. We've timed the trip to coincide with the end of the Baltic salmon season, the start of the bird and moose season for a Swedish McNab. Time to meet our black grouse and capercaillie guide, Felix and his two Finnish spits. Neil has never hunted with dogs like this. I'm looking forward to it. I've never seen this before, so it'll be interesting. Yeah? Yeah, it would be good fun, this. Hopefully we found, found something. And... So the, will the dogs now just sort of hunt the road or around the, this area here till they pick a scent and then follow? Yeah, follow with the sight. If yeah. we don't see the bird, they will stop and listen. The dogs um, will? Yeah. yeah. And I can hear up. 
to 500 meters. Kind of. That's after that. That's the the test is to find which tree. Okay. So, and when they get to the tree, they use all all the senses to smell the eyes and the ears. Incredible. To, Good to go. To see which tree is. So you, when we're looking for them, we're looking at them, looking at the bird in the, in yeah. the tree. Just yeah. follow the, see where they're looking, which tree. That's the. It's almost impossible if you don't see the dog. And you just try to find it in the tree without the dog. Then. No chance. No, no. Okay. Not happy. No pressure then. No. <laughs> It's an eyesight test for an old Scottish gamekeeper. <laughs> it will be fine. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Whatever the Swedes are hunting, and regardless of who they're hunting with, dogs come first. Always. It doesn't take long for Felix's two-year-old to find a bird. Felix can usually work out if it's a black grouse or a capper by the behaviour of the dog. When I was a kid, capper Cayley, and I'm not that old, Ooh. capper Cayley were abundant and uh, they've practically disappeared. But the further north you go, and you come to habitats like this, and the climate's still similar to what it was 50 years ago or 100 years ago, they're here and they're thriving. So with these guys harvesting forest grouse, they're having no negative impact on the population of any scale, and they do it to feed themselves. And, and this is what we're talking about, when you want to restore habitats, and you want to have people live in harmony with the land, then uh, it's making a wise use of a natural resource and that's what guys like Felix are doing. He loves it, he, lo he enjoys eating it. Oh, the, you can just yeah, tell, the passion good. just goes out. Yeah, it's yeah. good. <laughs> three, three times we've asked him today, what do you do with woodland grouse, Felix? And he's going, I eat them. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> Finally, we get a bird that's holding. We crawl into position. This technique is different to the one we experienced last year with Paul. That was using pointers and walking straight towards our quarry. This time it's stealth. But then you have to be able to spot it through all that greenery. Felix does his best to direct, but Neil can't see it. Until it takes off, of course. It'd be hard to see it. Yeah, incredible. I couldn't see that at all, David. But then it, when it moves, like half a cry out. Yeah, as soon as it moved, I thought, Jesus, it's right in front of us. And this was actually quite easy, yeah. easy bird, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> pitch black in the tree. Felix, <laughs> I was looking here, uh, and it was up there. Uh, yeah. yeah. A black bird in a green tree. Tree, yeah, really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, you oh. made your point. <laughs> yeah. The blind Scottish guy, yeah. I now have to apologise to clients over the years who've stalked deer with me and gone, I can't see it. And I've gone, you're blind, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> I have no excuses, except I couldn't see it. That's the common thing when you're new in this hunt. Yep. The hard thing is to see it. Now, as the weather is above 10 degrees, we can only hunt at the beginning and end of each day. The dogs are built for cooler weather. On the way back to the car, Neil asks about ticks. He feels the success of the grouse here could be a non-existent tick burden, which plagues our birds at home. Do you see many of these, Felix? Uh, not up here. On uh, our dogs, me and my girlfriend Ellen, we found maybe one, two or three each summer. But when you go to the coast, then it starts to be yeah. much, much more. Because we find in some areas now where the woodland grouse chicks are, uh, people pick them up and they're literally covered in these things. Okay. Never seen no, it on them. No, not on the See, uh, that's got to be significant to their survival as well, because for us now it's a big problem. Ticks, yeah. ticks everywhere. If you went and walked through an area like this yeah. at the moment in my area, you would maybe have 20 or 30 ticks on each leg. Easily. Oh, I'm happy we don't have them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that they are small when you forget the leash. <laughs> I forget the lead. Okay. First impressions? Fascinating. Dog work, brilliant. I'd never seen uh, a spitz in my life, far less even work, so I enjoyed that. And uh, it's harder than I thought. <laughs> what can I say? I have no defence. It sat in the top of a tree and I could not see it till it took off. Okay. So it was... thankfully, we've got a few days. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So I'm learning. But it's terrific. I mean, we're surrounded by Caledonian pine and uh, we're in the heart of Swedish Lapland. It's what's not like to like about it? We've been invited here. They're promoting tourism and encouraging people into the area and uh, it's nice to be involved in the culture and meet the people. Maybe we should do more of this in the UK. Fantastic.
incredible, breathtaking. After lunch at Jokfeld, it's our evening excursion. Felix uses his older dog. He's almost seven years old. Yeah. This is the dog that teach me how. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she barks, we stalk. There is no way Felix would allow anyone to take a bird without the dog in play. You're very much focused on doing the best with your dogs. So if, for example, a grouse landed here, having been disturbed, you wouldn't shoot that grouse? No, no. Why not? Tell me. Not because the, probably the, the dog has chased, chased it up from the ground. So yeah. Always, always wait for a dog. But okay. if the dog comes and starts barking, as at the right tree and everything everything is yeah good and in place then i shoot okay, okay. otherwise you never never shoot and it's so the dog understands it has to be at the right tree yeah right yeah. tree yeah okay otherwise you can get the dog that moving around a lot and not, don't really pick a tree maybe if moving around to five six different trees okay. then it's difficult to get anything in, in your bag Okay, understood. So basically it's for your long-term success. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As we lose the light and another bird, Felix finds himself with an opportunity. He decides it's too tricky for our travelling Scott and because he feels the dog needs a reward for all her hard work, he takes it. Okay, Felix, tell us what we're looking at here then. It's a uh, wood grouse uh, born this year, and this is the best meat that you can get. Yep. Telling you that. So we're going to eat this guy? Hopefully. Yeah. Maybe Robin can cook something. Cook and make something yeah. out of it, yeah. And it's an old trick uh, that all the ones used to. I learned from my dad. If you want to know is the, if it's a real <laughs> old one, now we can see if yep. it's a. Uh, young one but then you can grab it here and you see this cracked really easy yes so this is born this year but the real old one so you can hold it by here yeah and it won't break yeah, yeah. Nothing at all. we used to with similar in the grouse so you can feel it at the top of the nose yeah, yeah. If you put your nose you can feel it soft yeah you've heard this one too no, no. take no, your no. thumb yeah. and put your finger to the top of the beak here where yeah, my thumb is and you know, bend it yeah. feel it flex yeah, yeah and again a young bird so they do it with red grouse they pick it up and then say it's a young bird Oh, it's a that. similar idea. Yeah. Day two, and we know what we are doing. When they're when they're lacking, I've got them on the yeah. yeah. Horse of the forest. The horse of the forest and go with the cover Kaylee. Cover Kaylee. The cover Kaylee because of the horse. Yeah, because of the noise. Yeah. Cool. Neil's experience in the forests of Scotland means his eyes are not just on the treetops, but the forest floor too. At home, browsing pressure decides red deer impacts. Mm -hmm. So does poo counting, but only if used wisely. The thing about uh, dung counting that's important is that uh, you need to know how long the decay period is. But whenever you use dung counting, the important thing to remember is it's not telling you the number of animals you've got. It's telling you the number of animals utilising an area. So this is classically the case. That's the dog starting to bark in the background. The moose probably did this some time ago. And you could say the villain of these droppings isn't in the area at the moment. <laughs> so it, it's, it advises. It doesn't give you exact numbers. And maybe in the UK, this is where we're having problems. We're thinking that equals total number of moose. That equals total number of moose that were here at some point. Mm. Big difference. Yeah. So it could be a lot of shed. <laughs> <laughs> We're off in response to the dog. In the distance we see a flash of tail to guide us.
Neil gets into position and finally spots a bird. For the camera and shot cab, it's just a sea of green. Oh, calm down, Neil. Struck the tree. Struck the tree. Calm down. Struck the tree. Bastido. You see it sitting there, David? It's too it's clear now because it's taken the branch. Killed him that time. There he goes. There he goes. You get that? Yeah. Whew. Nice. <laughs> I got a bit nervous after the first one. I shot the branch and the branch flew away. Yeah, yeah. And the bird's looking at me. <sighs> that is not called. Felix! That I will see it like that. <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Yeah, no problem. This is not easy. No, it's, it's not. <sighs> that is not easy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it, trying to film it. Couldn't oh. see it, I could not see it. I'm sure I hit him the first time. Yeah, it can be because he didn't go far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clever girl, what's that now? Clever girl, what's that now? Clever girl, Clever girl, what's that now? Clever girl. Oh, appreciation for you. <laughs> Delighted. There's somebody that enjoys their job. Yeah. Wow. This is a baby from this year. Yes, yeah. Well grown. Yeah. Normally, hand is very much on the wheel. Yes. And totally in control. But you were shaking. But I was shaking. Yeah, I think <laughs> you. I can, I, right, I, yeah, you could. Uh, yeah, you could both see that. Yeah, but you know, the day I stop getting excited about hunting, I'll stop hunting. Yeah, that's that's, cool. that's the whole thing about it. Yeah, delighted, guys. Well done, David. Well done, Felix. Well done, you. With one bird in the bag and heading back to our kit, which we dropped off before the stalk. The dog is on another, just 40 yards from the last. It came down though, I saw it coming down. 50 yards back in cover and the dog pinpoints the kappa. Neil grabs it and makes sure. Oh yeah, good that the dog went back and find Yes, him. yeah. yeah. Hey, you were right. You were right. Hold on, here's left and a right at Cover Cayley. <laughs> Not what you expect every day. Is the left and a right allowed to be 40 metres? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a bit strange. <laughs> it's been an unusual day, yeah. yeah. I'll let you hold that for a minute while I make this thing empty. <laughs> so now we can have a proper Cover Cayley tea. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tea. No, enough, enough dinner for all of us, yeah? How much, how much meat will we get from this? Enough for a meal for two or three? Yeah, yeah, from both. From both. Now we have three. Now we have three. Yeah. So now everyone can eat it, yeah. Yep. Good. What a fascinating couple of days walking the forests of Swedish Lapland in search of the biggest member of the grouse family. It's an environment and climate in which it is thriving, and Neil feels that is why they will never return in numbers to the highlands of Scotland. I think tragically it's increasingly a temperate climate and it's a subarctic species so I, I think the dice is heavily loaded against the capper. I think what we have to do in, in modern conservation is rather than think of rewild we have to think of a new wild. They are the possible 
of what will prosper in our climate. And it's going to be a change not only in birds and mammals, it'll be a change in trees and, and, and probably in, in the way we use the landscape and survive. But here's been like time travel for both of us. I mean, species that we, we've heard about and that are cherished in our history and culture are abundant. We, we've seen coveys of capercaillie chicks on the road repeatedly, and these are well-grown birds. But the guides have all said to us, no ticks. Repeatedly, virtually no ticks. Good insect hatches, good dry summer conditions, and abundant berries. I mean, the vaccinium is everywhere. You and I have been walking about filling our pockets with blaeberries and eating them. And it's a different, it's a different habitat to what we're used to at home. We have to accept that now, then, do you think? I think there's a, there's a degree we have to accept. We've had a huge impact on this planet and things are changing. And I, I do believe it's an art, the art of the possible. I think to try and arrest history and go backward is romantic, but the climate is pushing us in another direction. Next time, it's moose, different dog and different rifle. To discover more about the wonderful outdoor experiences that Swedish Lapland offers, check out the Heart of Lapland website and one of their top destinations, Jogfall, known especially for its salmon fishing. For more information about the Blaser D99 drilling or any of the Blaser clothing worn by Neil in the film, go to blaser.de. Thank you, Neil. I wonder maybe it's time to make room in UK gun cabinets for a drilling or similar. I've had great fun with a combination rifle, a 12 bore and 243 over the last year, but more on that in another episode. Now, members of the Field Sports Nation not only get to back our news out, but they get to win prizes. This week, it's a 600 pound Athlon rifle scope kindly given to us by Somerset and online gun shop Rifleman Firearms. Is that enough to get you to join the Field Sports Nation? If not, you also get discounts on kit, thanks to gun shop Bailey's Shooting and Country Wear in Staffordshire for this month's money off offers. Ready to join? There's a link below. Now, already in this week's show, we have seen a creature swaying dangerously in the wind. Next up, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Country people around the UK paid their respects to mark the funeral of Her Late Majesty, the Queen. The field sports community held a variety of tributes to a queen who loved horses and dogs. A highlight of her funeral was her corgis and her fell pony, Emma, waiting for a coffin to arrive at Windsor. In Derbyshire, gamekeepers and shooters gathered to fire off a 96-gun salute. Representatives of the countryside groups attended, including Basque and the National Gamekeepers Organisation. The NGO's honorary president and former gamekeeper at Sandringham, David Clark, said it was a fitting tribute as the Queen loved the countryside. The Queen was a was a, a she was a countrywoman from birth. She absolutely adored being out in the countryside. She adored being out um, with her dogs. Um, she was just she was at, she was at home, and um, she was at home in the countryside. The Independent Office for Police Conduct is launching a criminal investigation into alleged health and safety breaches before the Plymouth shooting. The IOPC has confirmed it's investigating the running of Devon and Cornwall Police Firearms Licensing Unit before the incident last year. Jake Davison, who was 22, killed five people in August before turning a shotgun on himself. Police granted his shotgun certificate weeks earlier. They'd seized it in 2020 after Davison assaulted two teenagers in a park. As part of the investigation, two members of staff have been served with gross misconduct notices, while an officer has been served with a misconduct notice. A tribunal has found that a firearms whistleblower who raised the alarm about poor police vetting was bullied and unfairly dismissed. Tim Lum was shocked by the poor standards he saw when he joined the firearms licensing unit at Greater Manchester Police. The tribunal heard that over an 18-month period, Mr Lum witnessed colleagues failing to carry out basic checks, which would potentially reveal domestic violence reports or police intelligence linking people to organised crime. He reported this to his superiors in 2017, but nothing changed and he was bullied. Later that year, the constabulary terminated his assignment. Employment judge Liz Ord said Mr Lum's disclosures qualified as whistleblowing after an earlier tribunal found he was unfairly dismissed and mistreated. Greater Manchester Police refused to comment. Lord Zach Goldsmith has been sacked as an environment minister. The Conservative peer, a close friend of Boris Johnson and wife Carrie, who brought an animal rights agenda to DEFRA, has been stripped of the domestic animal welfare brief 
and will no longer attend Cabinet. There are reports he's expected to keep his role at the Foreign Office, where he is Minister of State for the Pacific and International Environment. We reported last week that he was still in his job at DEFRA following Liz Truss becoming Prime Minister. Downing Street said it had paused the reshuffle during the national period of mourning. BBC television presenter Chris Packham has been making claims that arsonists targeted his home because of his strong beliefs on fox hunting. He told the Mirror newspaper that the torching of a Land Rover discovery outside the gates of his estate in the New Forest last autumn was a hit job. The Spring Watch presenter alleges that thugs were paid to hit his car with firebombs. Though the police have not suggested that firebombs were used, that the car does not belong to Packham, and that it is one of many vehicles stolen, joy-ridden and burnt out in the New Forest every year. Police have a CCTV image of a suspect in a Mitsubishi Shogun, but no one has been arrested. The presenter didn't back up his claims with further evidence in the article. A police officer connected with the case confirmed to Field Sports News that the Hampshire Police is considering investigating Packham's attempts to whip up hatred against country people in the area. One of his supporters recently posted this painting of Packham. The Countryside Alliance is calling for people to nominate their favourite business for their awards. Nicknamed the Rural Oscars, there are five categories including local food or drink, village shop or post office, butcher, rural enterprise and pub. Nominations will be open until the 13th of November 2022, then voting will be open to the public. The regional winners will go forward to a grand final, with the champions reception held at the House of Lords in May next year. Last year there were 18,000 nominations. The link to make your nomination is in the description below. India has imported eight cheetahs from Namibia. The cats arrived on the birthday of the Prime Minister Narendra Modi. They will undergo a month-long quarantine before release into the Kuno National Park in the north of the country. Wildlife experts, veterinary doctors and three biologists accompanied the animals as they made the journey in a modified passenger plane. The animal became extinct in India 70 years ago. The aim is to bring back at least 20 of the big cats from Namibia and South Africa in the next five years. The scheme, which cost around £10 million, is controversial, as some conservationists are concerned of the impact the animals will have. Norway's environment minister says it's not illegal to shoot four wolves. Espen Bath Eid is appealing against the decision of two courts over the killing of wolves in a wildlife protection zone. Locals shot four animals in January 2020 in the Letjena area. The government also issued a license to hunt the wolves, but the Oslo District Court and the Court of Appeal convicted the state of unlawfully killing the animals because they were in the protection zone. The government is referring the case to the Supreme Court as it says it raises important issues around wolf management. Thanks to Per Holmseth for the story. The owner of US clothing giant Patagonia is giving his company away to the Antis. Rock climber Yvonne Chouinard founded the company and is now restructuring it so all its profits go to the conservation industry, including animal rights extremists. He says, as of now, Earth is our only shareholder. The company has created controversy with some of its decisions and affiliations. Last year, it confirmed it paid money to an anti-hunting group, Moreland Monitors, even though in 2015, Patagonia entered the shooting market with a range of clothing sold through UK outlets and made much of its hunting credentials in its marketing. It cash payments to a group dedicated to ending grouse shooting provoked anger from the hunting and shooting community worldwide. The manufacturer started repeating baseless statements from Moreland Monitors in January 2022. Thank you to Graham Saltmarsh for the story. Do you ride to hounds on a former racehorse? If so, you could win six days hunting with the Kimblewick. The Rye Dry ROR Racing to Hunting Challenge is open for entries. Nominate your former racehorse before the beginning of October and six national finalists will be given a day's hunting with the Kimblewick Hunt. Horses will be judged throughout the day on their all-round behaviour and manners when they're hunting. The link to make a nomination is below. There's a new world record long-range rifle shot. US shooters Scott Austin and Shepard Humphreys gathered a team to tackle the challenge of beating the previous record of four miles set in 2020. They beat it by almost half a mile. They fired the winning shot in the high desert of Wyoming. The bullet took 24 seconds to hit an eight inch bullseye. The team planned the project for two years, collecting parts from all over the world to create a custom built rifle. 
They used special hand-laid bullets and spent 1,500 hours researching and practicing. It took 69 shots to hit the target and take the record. If we went out and did this day after day after day in very gentle, calm winds, and we did it for a month, I don't know that we would get another one in there. This is just good fortune meeting with a really good rifle, really good optics, really good shooter, really good coach, really good everything came together that day. And finally, the Times newspaper carried a perplexing report last week. According to Times journalist Will Humphreys, stag hunters on Exmoor chased the stag, brought it to bay and shot it. As this activity has been taking place several times a week during the season for at least the last 500 years, it was peculiar to see it written as a news story. Humphreys refused to respond to a request for an explanation. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stuck in the stories, fishing for facts. buying shooting kits then head to kit finder and our team will help you find the right product at a fair price from dealers all over the uk kit finder the shooting kit comparison website <laughs> ah do i ever wish i had a nine to five job no a lot of people say to me i'd love to do your job but a lot of people are not realistic about the hours I do, so, but it's great. Good days when everything runs smoothly and everyone goes home and you have those messages that evening or the next day saying, fantastic day, you run the days like clockwork and that, that is, yeah, music to me is. If you have a tyre that is just for one job, it's no good for the other job and that's, you know, the truck behind is basically, it's a, a vehicle I need on the road and I need it for doing you know, shoot days and stalking as well, so it's off-road. So it's no good having a, a big chunky tyre on it. You've got to have a best of both worlds. So luckily, 50-50, it works a treat. So the AT3s take me to any part of the estate, anywhere I need to go, reliable, safe, really pleased. Next, we have a contributed film by South African filmmaker Phil Hatting. He made it in German a year ago, and he's made a one-hour version in English that's on his own YouTube channel. Uh, and this is a short version he's made for Field Sports Britain uh, as a teaser for his, his long film. He explains how hunting tourism is poorly understood and how the conservation industry is manipulating that situation. In our film, We'll talk to a wide range of people who live and work in community conservation areas across Namibia to establish firsthand just how sustainable utilisation of wildlife resources continues to benefit them directly by uplifting these rural communities. Then, we'll test the animal rightists' claims, peddle to rake in donations from a misinformed public, a public that's oblivious to the harm being created to conservation of wildlife and the impact on impoverished communities whose human rights are being trampled on by the eco-colonialists. Determined to conceal the misinformation they peddle from their donor base, whenever evidence in support of sustainable utilisation is presented, animal rights organisations go to extraordinary lengths to prevent conservation facts from being published. Like when the Born Free Foundation asked CNN not to broadcast a documentary that examines the value of trophy hunting as a conservation tool. We are respectfully asking you to please reconsider airing your shockumentary on your esteemed network. In its current form, could do irreparable damage to the cause of responsible wildlife conservation. To the broadcaster's credit, they screened the documentary that went on to be nominated for a News and Documentary Emmy Award for Outstanding Nature Documentary. <coughs> Far from the air-conditioned boardrooms and keyboard conservationists in affluent first world countries, the true value of conservation hunting can be found on the plains and in the African bush. So there is a very big benefit from trophy hunting. And then when the money is in the office or in the account of the conservancy. As the 
uh, committee and the community, we decide on how do we use the money to bring projects and how to bring uh, employment to, to, the, to the communities. You will see the two blocks which was built from the money of the trophy hunting. Then you're looking at it the other way. It's not, it's not only money, but we are still also benefiting from meat. If the elephant is short, if the buffalo is short, if the hippo is short, and then the professional him, hunter himself transports meat to the community and we give meat to the members. Politicians and celebrities that lend their voices to condemn hunting on a feelings not facts basis is another topic we address in the full version of our film. I have spent a great deal of time in Africa with Africans. I've spent a lot of time with game rangers and people like that. And as soon as they get to understand and as soon as they can find ways of living without killing animals, that's what they do. They're very proud of their wildlife. If, 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 you, if you bear it, there are something which you can do. From trophy hunting, we get a lump sum every year. If we are doing hunting, we got up money. If you take it away, you must be willing to pay that money to the community. So if you go about tender for an area, not only for your, for your trophy animals, but also you do a tender and you say, for example, listen here, in, in this three or five years that I've got the lease, you have, or you will provide three boreholes, equip them with solar to get fresh water. You will provide anti-poaching with uniforms. You will provide jobs for the people in this area. So this is, this includes tracker, skinner, general work, manager, anti-poaching, um, game guards, uniform, uh, tents, everything. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big deal at the end of the day. I find a lot of that shocking. The antis are throwing away our wildlife for their ideology. And I hope it inspires you to watch the full film. And there's a link to it in the description below. Now to Hunting Kit and Dan Bibb from Shooting Sports UK lists his shotguns in the category Best But Budget. What other Italian exotica is available to me? As you know, David, we're a Zolli premium dealer, so naturally I'm going to have to <laughs> show you a Zolli. Zolli as a brand is not as well known in the UK as, say, Parazzi, but that doesn't take away any sort of, of the quality or the pedigree of the gun. It is a very good example of one of their uh, Z Sports. This is a Z Sport matte black. The action of the barrels is where you're uh, where you spend any money on this gun. The barrels are in fact silver soldered and they come with a, uh, a lifetime warranty. So the gun as a whole is 10 years. So the warranty, they're really standing by the guns. So for competition shoots, it's important a lot of the time that they've got a detachable trigger. So the Zollies come with a detachable trigger. And the last thing you want in the middle of competition is trigger group failing. If you was after a game gun, something nice and pretty and unique. This is a this is Zolli Panisse. As you can see, game stock, round action, but all of the same great technology in the barrels, the silver soldiering, with the action, the trigger group, and the wood. It all still resonates in this game gun. So they've really took technology from a high-end uh, sporting shotgun and brought it into a game gun. This, this gun actually shoots extremely nice. This is one of our demo guns, believe it or not. It's still in beautiful condition. This, uh, yeah, all of our demo guns will be able to be uh, tried at our kid shooting ground, uh, a new shop of ours. So yeah, that's, uh, please guys, get in touch. Well, I've got you then. Just tell me about OK. We're going to concentrate more on shotguns, air rifles over at Alked Shooting Ground. You're going to see all the great service that you get from here, the great stock we've got here, the great guns we've got here. Exactly the same, friendly service, but over at Oak Edge, based on the shooting ground. Thanks, Dan. Now from kits to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, brought to you by James Marchington. It is Hunting YouTube.
This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. We're not the only ones who have trouble with antis. Here's flatline fowl being harassed while out decoying geese in New York State. The police are called and handle the situation well, but it does rather interrupt the sport. Back in the UK, Jaff from South Somerset Ferritus sends us his latest film. He sets up his hide by a telegraph pole in the middle of a beaten stubble field and has a good day shooting crows and rooks. This is basically a pirated copy of John Darling's classic 1970s air gun hunting video, Getting the Kill. It's transferred from VHS, so the quality isn't great but it's good enough, and the advice is just as relevant today. Thanks to Dave Bradshaw for recommending that one. This Alaskan couple reluctantly hunt down a bear that's stealing the fish they caught to feed their sleigh dogs. It's part of the last Alaskan series, which you can find on the Discovery Channel. In this film, bow hunter Tim Wells walks us through his trophy room and tells the gripping stories behind the displays of boar, wolf, and bear. Aussie bush harvest is shooting ducks in New South Wales as part of an official crop protection program. They cook up some duck noodle soup, then go fishing for rainbows in the mountain streams. The National Gamekeepers Organization has made this video to explain the difference between the old-fashioned snare and its modern equivalent, the humane cable restraint, which is proving to be a vital tool for wildlife managers and scientists. Finally, here's a chap who took a gamble and bought a locked storage unit for $5,000. It turns out to be in Aladdin's cave of guns and ammo, worth five times what he paid for it. That's it for this week. We've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email Charlie the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube. Best of all, pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain, which is out at 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs>